Alright, in this video we're going to be going through how to use the flash print software, uh, slicing, preparing your models, and getting them ready for print. So, first thing we want to do is we want to open up the flash print software, and then what we want to do is import, or first thing we're going to do actually is make sure we're using the correct machine here. And how we're going to do that is by going to the print menu and selecting our machine type from machine type. So for this, we're going to use Creator, our Flashforge Creator Pro. And this is our build area, our effective build area of our machine. So, the next thing we want to do is we want to load an object. We'll simply do that by navigating to where our, our object is, um, either in your, your cloud drive or locally. Uh, you'll open your object and it will import first thing it's going to do is tell you whether it's on the bed or off the bed which is a, a nice feature and you can automatically like I just did there uh, put it right on the bed so going through things one at a time here the view um, option is these are set views if you left click on that you can change your default view to uh, front view side view and you get it um, you can also move uh, by holding the right mouse button down you can rotate the camera holding the left you can move the camera in a fixed uh, pane and using the scroll wheel you can zoom in and out of your object next we want to move it so we'll, we'll simply click this button and you can uh, using your left uh, mouse button you can just move the object around the bed and you'll see that every time I encroach on a wall it's going out of our build area Alternatively, you can click the button, um, you can uh, do specific movements on each axis if you would like, or you can just simply um, reset it to its original position. Next, because we want to rotate it um, for this particular design, you can grab each axis also here individually, and by clicking on this button, you can reset it to what it was um, original or you can move it 90 degrees in each direction simply by pressing these buttons it's kind of a nice feature so in order for this to be back on the bed I'm gonna to have to go back to my move tool click it again and I'm gonna tell it to go on the platform now I'm happy with that next I is the scale you can drag the scale uniformly with your mouse button back and forth to just visually um, see where you would want it to be or you can simply uh, enter your dimensions in here if you uncheck this box you can manipulate each um, axis individually the cut tool is uh, is fairly interesting if you have um, if you wanted to separate this in half what you would do is click the cut tool and then draw a line on the area which you want to cut let's just for this say the middle and I would do that then I'd rotate it around and I'd say okay that's a bit goofy but for this that's pretty cool so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click my my cut button and then I'm gonna say start cut boom it separated my object into two pieces you'll also notice um, for the cut tool if we do that very same cut but we don't want the two to separate what we can do is say keep the parts in place, start the cut, and now we actually effectively have two models. This is really handy for, for dual printing um, when we get to the extruder in the next. So let's just for now though undo that. And we still have our solid object. We'll select it. So when you're printing, um, using the extruder tab here, uh, the color of your object is going to determine which extruder is used. Uh, with the Creator Pro, most of the time you're going to want to use the, the left extruder, especially when you're printing with PLA, because then you'll utilize the, the uh, cross-flow fan, and your bridging will be a lot more effective, and you'll get a, a nice, clean finish on your PLA prints. Well, I tend to find that I do. So for this, we're going to use the left extruder. And now from here, we are going to simply um, press the print button. Actually, before we do that, we're going to go click file, we're going to click preferences, and we're going to change um, that to left. Our preferred extruder is left. And we're going to change our printing window type to expert mode from basic. 
And the reason for this is because we're able to manipulate a whole lot more settings in our, in our print. So now we're going to click the print button. We've got our extruder selected. And this might seem a bit daunting at first, but it's very straightforward. Most of these settings uh, for standard quality are, are very good right off the bat. There's only a few things that you may want to change, and that's going to be the extruder temperature. The reason for that is, is PLA is at 220 degrees Celsius is quite hot for PLA. And typically you're going to print between 195 and 210, especially with the Flashforge Blue that comes with your machine. So 210, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say go any higher, hotter than that. Otherwise, you're going to get um, oozing and stringing coming out of your nozzle, and you just have a lot of work cleaning up your print at the end. Um, and if you click on the print perimeter or in the perimeter uh, settings, shell count means the number of passes that you have with your extruder for the exterior of your object. So like the shell of your object. So two shell counts essentially means that it's going to print 0.8 millimeters thick until your printer starts to produce the infill on the center, uh, on the interior of your object. I typically do this as a three. Now it's up to you. Um, I do a lot of sanding, a lot of finishing work on my uh, prints when I'm finished. So I tend to go a little higher because I know if I'm going to sand it, I certainly don't want to burn through to the inside. And I can get a really nice clean finish and I'm not worried about putting some extra elbow grease into my prints. So and from here I really, I really don't play with these settings too much, but you can um, to get different effects. Um, in fill percentage, uh, fill density and things like that. Uh, the top solid layers means against similar to uh, our shell thickness. If we have a solid top layer and really low infill percentage, um, then we'll get a lot less drooping on our final print. And what I mean by that is if you're printing um, a low infill percentage and you're doing a long straight surface on the top of your print, like a rectangle or something like that, um, what's going to happen is, is when you're trying to lay a, a solid layer on top of your infill, um, it can tend to droop into the honeycomb pattern or whichever your infill pattern is um, in order to um, lay that layer down. And I'm not saying that uh, a, lower den uh, a lower infill density is, is a bad thing, but you may have to increase the top layers in order to not see any bowing in between your, your infill. And also, again, if you're going to be doing a lot of sanding, it's, it's kind of handy to have a, a more top layers, for sure. Bottom layers, not so much. Um, three is kind of a magic number for myself. So, um, Vase mode is an interesting one. It, it basically just does the, the, the bottom layer, and it foregoes the top layer of your model object, and it only does the shell. So it's basically 0% infill. So you're creating a vase, essentially. And it also prints in and corkscrew continuous uh, circles concentrically. It's a pretty interesting mode to use if you're going to be doing a vase. Um, supports, for this we don't have supports, but you'll use supports especially when you have overhangs. Uh, overhangs, uh, really fine detail items. Um, you'll find that flash print has an excellent tree-like support um, structure for automatic, but that's another video. Um, we're not really going to enable raft all that often. I find that using the build plate with, uh, and when I'm level properly, I don't really need to use a raft. I know they suggest that you use a raft when you're using support material um, on your designs and models. However, most of the time I feel, I, I find personally that I don't have this issue. Um, if you're having just no luck printing, um, this might be an option to try just to get bad adhesion and to make sure that your prints are successful. Um, if you want to do pre-extrusion, I highly recommend pre-extrusion on every print. It's on by default. Um, this is going to uh, produce a, a small line around your object um, in order to make sure that your material is extruding properly and so that your first layer of your print doesn't have a bunch of an ugly mess. Um, and yeah. Uh, you name it a wall if you're dual printing in order to control oozing, um, but for this, uh, we're not going to use it. Um, you can also change extrusion ratios, um, a lot of other things, which is quite interesting here. Um, when I would never recommend adjusting stepper voltage unless you know it's out. 
A few other things are um, when you want to turn on your fan with PLA I always want my fan on um, that way I get nice bridging and, and like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the configuration here I'm, I'm gonna say okay I'm happy with all my settings and now it's going to want to uh, print so for this I'm going to save it as the x3g file you'll see it um, it's loading and now it's sliced so I can drag this bar down and give me an idea of what it's gonna look like um, during print so this is my infill pattern this is the pre-extrusion that I was talking about earlier in order to make sure that your your first layer is going to lay down nicely so that looks pretty good I think we're we're ready to go just gonna drag it all the way to the bottom yeah nothing missing the design isn't flawed and it's gonna take one hour nine minutes so terrific so from here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy that x3g file that I found in my downloads folder let's go to downloads folder and it will be located right here I'm going to simply copy that file onto my SD card and plug it into my printer and away I go and that is the basics of using flash print thanks for watching